Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will, be, we will begin the commencement shortly. Please find your seat. If you have empty seats between you and others, please move in so that our uh, remaining guests can quickly find a place to sit. Thank you.
On behalf of the faculty and staff, I welcome you to the 2022 Eastern Maine Community College Commencement Ceremony. I want to give a special welcome if this is your first formal in-person graduation because when you graduated from high school, you weren't able to have one. And we're very happy you're here today. Unless you're on call or monitoring your children, please silence your cell phones as we start our ceremony and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Jill Conant, accompanied by Lincoln Blake. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare for the bombs bursting in air oh, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled oh, banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home? You may be seated. <laughs> Tonight, we gather to honor the achievements of students who overcame the usual challenges posed by work, family, and other demands to reach their educational goal of gaining a post-secondary credential under the most daunting of circumstances by the pandemic. But despite all of that, you are here tonight personifying the qualities and values you possess, determination, courage, and a will to succeed that the virus could not overcome. For that, you deserve and receive our high praise and admiration. We know the qualities you have demonstrated to get here tonight will serve you well in your future endeavors, wherever you may go and whatever you may do. Tonight, we celebrate your hard work that brought you to this point and that of the faculty and staff who supported you along the way. We pause tonight to rest on our laurels, knowing that our journey may have us sailing into rough seas in the future. But we trust your EMCC experience will fly you over the waves of adversity and into a brighter dawn on the horizon and beyond. You are such a special class that tonight we don't get just, you don't get just one, you get two presidents. That might scare the faculty a bit, but that's the way it is. Me, the outgoing interim, but more importantly, the newly named permanent president and current vice president for academic affairs, Elizabeth Russell, who assumes the highest office at EMCC. So, no, not yet. No, I am, I'm not finished. Hang on. I tried. 
I thought you were going to rise for the standing ovation. I was. <laughs> I'm going to say more things about you. Liz brings strong leadership to her new role, grounded in over 25 years of service to the college and a proven track record of accomplishment that will serve her well in the challenging years ahead. Liz is a Mainer's Mainer. It is my privilege to introduce the newly minted next president of EMCC, Elizabeth Russell. Don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> Eastern Maine Community College has indeed been fortunate to have Dr. Wayne Burton serve as our interim president since early fall. And we are thankful that he was named the interim president because he brought a calm and a peace to the campus. And Wayne, on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff, I present you with this gift that was handcrafted by longtime faculty member Les Stackpole. I would like to introduce the platform party to you, but before I do, I want to apologize for the errors that are in your programs. We will have those reprinted, and when the diplomas are mailed out to you, you will receive copies of your uh, program with the complete program and names uh, mailed to you. So, as I call your name, would you please stand? On my far right is Charlie Wharton, a retired faculty member from the Precision Metal Manufacturing Program. And now I'm gonna ask you to hold your applause until I get through them all, thank you. Next, we have Donna McLaughlin, also retired faculty member in medical radiography. Nathan Scott, department chair, culinary arts. Dr. Wayne Burton, president of Eastern Maine Community College. Marie Vigno, our 2022 commencement speaker. Beth Lorigan, trustee of the Maine Community College system. Patricia Duran, trustee of the Maine Community College system. Elizabeth True, vice president of student affairs. And Rebecca Peters, the 2022 Eastern Maine Community College student of the year. It's also my privilege to introduce those who have spent countless hours sharing their subject matter expertise and passion for learning. Those that have nurtured, counseled, advised, inspired, and encouraged our students. Those that have pushed you, our graduates, day in and day out to give your very best and those that push me to do the same, our faculty. I would ask the faculty to please rise. Graduates, please show them appreciation for all they have done for you during your time at Eastern Maine Community College. Now I invite President Burton to the podium to share with you remarks from Maine Community College System President David Daigler. The Maine System uh, Community College of Seven Colleges is led by a President David Daigler, 
who intended to be with us tonight, but was unavoidably detained and feels very badly, but he asked that I read this to you. And I think David may be watching on YouTube as I speak. I'm quoting him, I'm quoting David now. I want the faculty, staff, and fam family members to know that I and all of us within the system are grateful for their roles in the day's celebration of success. They have taught, encouraged, and supported these graduates who encounter more than their fair share of challenges in getting to the graduation stage. Without their commitment, this celebration would not be as memorable. And to the class of 2022, I'd like to extend my hearty congratulations. They deserve to be proud of your accomplishment. Commitment, com accomplishment. Commencement is the beginning, not an end. The world of work is changing rapidly. Return, learn more. As these students begin their careers, I hope they consider this college their lifelong partner. Together, they will become more than they are, more than they dream to be. Today is a day of celebration. Celebrate responsibly, but do, not, but do celebrate. You have so much to be proud of. Thank you, and again, congratulations. Thank you, David. If you're watching, thank you very much. At this time, I ask Trustee Lorigan and Nathan Scott to come forward and bring you formal greetings to this 55, 55th annual commencement of Eastern Maine Community College. Oh boy, am I nervous. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Eastern Maine Community College commencement of 2022. On behalf of my colleagues, including Trustee Patty Durham, who are with us here tonight, and all my colleagues at the Maine Community College Board of Trustees, it's my great pleasure to be with you this evening to extend our congratulations to this graduating class. The Maine Community College Board of Trustees is very proud of you, as are your families, friends, your teachers, the staff here at Eastern Maine Community College. We know that many of you come to us from non-traditional work backgrounds. Many of you already are a part of the workforce and raising families, yet you still put in the time, did the hard work, and successfully completed your program of studies. And you did it during a time of pandemic. These last two years have been challenging for all of us, but it's been especially difficult for those of you who are not in jobs where you were able to take a laptop home, have groceries and goods delivered, and continue to get a paycheck. You quickly learned that you were in that unique group given the title essential workers. You weren't able to wait out the pandemic at home. You had to be in hospitals doing the nursing and emergency medical care, providing child care, fighting fires and crime, completing construction projects, doing electrical, welding, plumbing and heating to keep our homes and our businesses running. Some of you had to work hard to keep your own businesses alive, despite the lockdowns and restrictions that we lived through. On top of all this, you completed a course of studies in a world, a new virtual world that was completely new to all of us. You didn't give up, and tonight you, we're all sitting together again. So as I'm looking out at your unmasked and smiling faces, understanding how critically important each of you are and how important it is to be the essential worker. I'm grateful to be here to celebrate with you. Your accomplishments reaffirm to all of us the belief that the people of Maine are willing to work hard to achieve their dreams. You've demonstrated that by being here tonight. So once again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I wish each of you the very best for your future. Have a wonderful graduation weekend. Thank you. Good evening. 
Like many of you, today I've spent a lot of time reflecting upon all that's happened over the last couple of years, the many challenges that we've faced, a pandemic, social distancing, face masks, political and ideological division, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. A lot has happened. <laughs> a lot of obstacles have tried to separate us. A lot of conflicts have tried to pull us apart. I remember back in March of 2020 when the world shut down and we all went home. I stood before my final in-person class of that semester wanting to say something inspirational, wanting to make it all right. Instead, I said something more along the lines of, uh, I guess I'll see you all online. I think there are a few of you that were there for that very eloquent and inspiring speech. In that moment, it was hard to even think about tomorrow. I think we were all so worried about germs and hand washing, about trying to figure out what information was true and what shouldn't be believed about where to get our next toilet paper fix. It was scary times. And it was hard to imagine how any of this could continue, how this community could survive. But you know, we did meet online. We did reconnect. We did work together to make plans, to achieve goals, to overcome challenges. Despite it all, we reached out for each other and through cooperation, hard work, dedication, through optimism, empathy, compassion, through community, we made it. And today, we finally get to come back together again and celebrate. Today, we get to dream and to hope. Today, we get to not only imagine the lives that we want for ourselves, but the world we all deserve to live in. Today, we get our future back. And who better to lead us into that future than you, the graduating class of 2022? You who have faced more obstacles than probably any class in the history of this institution. When your lecture courses went virtual, you still found ways to show up. For some of you, that meant logging on from home. For others, though, that meant finding internet wherever you could, including parking your car outside the nearest McDonald's and taking advantage of the free Wi-Fi. When it wasn't safe to have in-person labs, you still found ways to practice hands-on skills remotely. My culinary arts students, for example, they started their education here by basically playing Food Network Star. We sent food home for them. They videotaped themselves or photographed their work, emailed me all those files, and then I got to grade all that work. I have to admit, it wasn't as tasty as in-person classes, but it worked. Medical radiography. I've heard that some of the students who are out on their clinical experiences still practice their patient positioning at home. They put family members in these mock x-ray tubes made out of cardboard and lumber and flashlights. You all figured it out. <laughs> Nothing stopped you. You found the best in yourselves. And you helped keep this community together. And now, it's your responsibility to go forward and to continue pushing through obstacles, overcoming adversity. It's up to you to keep reaching for the best in yourselves and working with others to build community wherever you go. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that the world can throw some pretty unexpected challenges at us. But by working together, we can solve problems. Through cooperation, we can achieve goals. Through community, we can build a great future. And I have every confidence that you are the right people to lead that work. Congratulations, graduates. Now go out there and show the world exactly what a community college graduate can do. Each year, each of the seven community colleges within the Maine Community College system selects a student of the year for their academic success and campus and community involvement. 
In April, the Student of the Year recipients received the John and Jana LaPointe Leadership Award at a ceremony held simultaneously on all of our campuses. It is now my pleasure to introduce EMCC's Student of the Year, Rebecca Peters, a member of the Criminal Justice Program Class of 2022. Good evening, fellow graduates, family, friends, and EMCC faculty. When I first started school at EMCC in the fall of 2020, we were months into a pandemic. I thought, since everything's online, I can go back to school, and it'll be easy because it's community college. It took less than a week for EMCC to shatter all expectations that I had of being able to coast my way through Zoom calls to a degree. As a non-traditional student, I felt like an outsider. Everyone in my class was literally half my age. I hadn't stepped foot in a classroom in over two decades, and I felt like my brain had been sitting on a shelf collecting dust for a long time. I needed to bust out the dictionary to look up half of the words in my first reading assignment. Oh, and I absolutely bombed my first college quiz. I began to remember why I had dropped out of college the first time. I emailed my advisor to express some of my concerns, and he told me something that not only stuck with me, but carried me throughout my entire time here at EMCC. He told me that what I saw as weakness could turn out to be my strength. My age meant experience that my younger classmates didn't yet have, and failure was an opportunity to learn from my mistakes and do better next time. I decided to stick it out. I never imagined that I would be standing up here speaking to my graduating class at commencement with the honor of being chosen student of the year. The version of me who was accepted into the criminal justice program two years ago never would have been able to achieve this. I have learned so much during my time at EMCC. Obviously, I've learned everything necessary to receive my degree in criminal justice. But I've also learned to fail gracefully. I've learned to be confident in my abilities. I've learned to accept my successes. But most importantly, I learned that success is not something I could achieve on my own. It's those around me who have offered help and support that are truly instrumental in anything that I will ever achieve. So on behalf of all of the graduates here, I would like to thank everyone who has supported us throughout our journey toward this day. Thank you to all of the EMCC faculty. We literally could not have done any of this without you. My instructors have given me the tools that I need to be successful in my law enforcement career. Some of them became coworkers. Others gave advice on oral boards, polygraphs, PT tests, or were so gracious to be listed as re references on my resume. Thank you to the employers who were understanding and supportive of our educational and career goals while we worked to achieve them. While I've been at EMCC, I've had the pleasure of working at the Penobscot County DA's office and more recently was hired by the Lincoln Police Department. They were both very flexible with my schedule, always willing to answer my questions, and there were a lot of questions. My chief hired me on as a full-time officer knowing that finishing my degree was my top priority. He and my fellow officers in the department have accommodated my crazy schedule and made it possible for me to reach this finish line. Thank you to all of our fellow classmates, those here and those who have already graduated or will be where we are next year. Those of us in the criminal justice program have all heard from day one that we're all in this together, and I still can't say that without singing it. I know that I made it through the toughest of times in the last two years because of all of you. I've been so thankful for each and every one of your contributions to class discussions, group projects, Zoom study sessions, and sometimes just being someone to complain to or stress out with. I honestly don't think any of us would be here today without the others. Thank you to the advising staff who have supported each of us in our respective programs, recommending classes, juggling schedules, forwarding emails to the right departments, writing recommendation letters, polishing resumes, the list of things that you all do has got to be endless. My advisors have been incredibly instrumental in my success at EMCC. Hope, you have never failed to offer encouragement exactly when needed. Labani, there is not enough time in this ceremony to devote to all the ways you were instrumental in me being the one standing up here giving this speech today. I will never be able to sufficiently express my gratitude for all of the opportunities that you entrusted to me, for your support, guidance, and even for occasionally calling me out for not seeing in myself what you could clearly see very early on. 
Thank you so much to the families and friends who have been there through all the frustration, the success, the failures, the joy, and the tears. I know my mom has always been my biggest fan and cheerleader. <laughs> I'm not a crier. <laughs> Even hanging some of my best grades on her refrigerator. My dad, brother and sister were an inspiration going back to school to earn degrees later in life than most. And my oldest brother was always a source of encouragement and comic relief whenever I struggled. And of course, my husband, who was my inspiration to go into law enforcement, and my four sons who have been incredibly patient and supportive as I redefined their normal and slipped out of the role of full-time mom and into that of student and now police officer. So as we all accept our degrees tonight and get ready for what comes next, remember to be proud of your accomplishment, but don't forget to thank those around you who helped you achieve it. Once again, congratulations to my fellow graduates. We've made it. Rebecca has every right to shed a tear. I've met her wonderful family. <clears throat> Rebecca also got one of the first scholarships in the country ever awarded to an associate degree student, which was very special. Our commencement address this evening will be given by the Senior Vice President of Northern Light Health System and President of Northern Light CA Dean Hospital in Greenville, Maine, and Northern Light Mayo Hospital in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Throughout her career, Marie has worked with boards and communities to retain and expand access to rural health care critical services through recruitment and retention of high quality providers, enhancing reimbursement, and ensuring efficient operations to sustain care. Collaboration with other partners has been key to this work. It is through our partnership that we develop the nursing model currently preparing dozens of nurses at five rural hospitals in the region. It is my great pleasure to welcome Marie Benoit. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Burton and new President Russell. Um, get to my speech. So good evening, uh, graduates, parents, and esteemed faculty. It's my pleasure and honor to be invited to speak to you tonight as your commencement speaker and celebrate the milestone of your college graduation. I will keep my remarks brief because I know I stand between you and what you're really here for, which is your diplomas. So let's get on with it. <laughs> you must feel a great sense of pride and accomplishment at having reached this goal I know that college has plenty of moments of stress, self-doubt, worry that you might not pass that exam, paper or course. Will you make it to the end? What if you don't? Of course, we have to mention the pandemic at every speech this evening, but you did overcome challenges that most college students have not had to in this century. Your education was completed during a worldwide pandemic, which is something none of us has ever lived through. That meant changes in your schedules, remote learning, and other challenges that you didn't anticipate or would have never dreamed of when you entered your program. Give yourselves an extra pat on the back for that. And congratulations to you for selecting Eastern Maine Community College for your education. I have been so impressed with the college as I've worked with your faculty and staff throughout my career and most recently with our nursing program, the Train Your Own RN program. Starting with what was then Mayo Regional Hospital, we developed a partnership with EMCC so that local students desiring to be nurses could be trained almost entirely in their hometowns. This removed the extra burden of travel and housing what they faced while completing their studies. This is a very innovative model that has been successful and has expanded to five other hospitals offering similar programs. Tonight, I am pleased to announce that the most recent students of the EMCC, Northern Light CA Dean Hospital Program, are here to receive their diplomas. Congratulations to Sandra Sykes and Cassandra Richardson. 
<laughs> As a healthcare leader, the challenges of the last two years have certainly tested my ability to adapt, to work harder than I ever thought I had the energy for, and to dig deep into my resilience to continue to support my employees through the pandemic while keeping them and our patients safe. As we learned mo more about COVID-19, our policies sometimes change daily. And I'm sure that you all found the same things in your education as well as with your families. It certainly kept us on our toes. So you're graduating. What's next? My hope for you is that you will find career opportunities either in your hometowns or somewhere else in Maine. Regardless of your course of study, virtually every industry in Maine has a job and a career opportunity for waiting for you. And we need our young people in Maine. Maine is the oldest state in the nation and in most counties, the fastest growing segment of our population is those over age 65. My county, Piscataquis, is the number one in that category. I used to think that 65 seemed old, but now that I'm within a decade of it, I think 65 is the new 35, so. <laughs> I speak from experience when I say that Maine has many fulfilling career possibilities. I have much in common with all of you. I grew up in the mill towns of Millinocket and East Millinocket. My dad was a mill worker for 40 years. As a teen, I watched it age him prematurely, and at that point, I decided that I wanted out of there and out of Maine altogether. So after high school, I moved to Boston for nursing school. I completed nursing school there and earned my RN and worked for a Boston hospital for about a year and a half. It did not take me long during those years in the hectic city to realize that what I had left was not so bad. There is really something to be said for Maine the way life should be. So even though at 18 I thought I was leaving and never coming back, I did just that. I came back. I, I came back to my hometown and I moved to Millinocket. I began my career in Maine as a staff nurse at Millinocket Regional Hospital. I aspired to leadership roles at a young age and became their chief nursing officer at the age of 26. During these years, I also completed my bachelor's and master's degrees because one of my career goals has been to never stop learning. I worked hard and became their CEO in 2002. I don't want to mislead anyone to think that it was easy. It was very challenging trying to keep a rural hospital financially feasible, provide high quality care, and raise four boys, something in common with a student of the year. Um, especially since our mills went bankrupt in January of 2003, six months after I had taken the helm. And they had multiple restarts, but as most of you probably know, they eventually closed permanently, devastating the economy of the region and leaving the hospital as the largest employer, not a position I had ever wanted to be in. So after 20, oh, excuse me, more than 20 years in Millinocket, I, I moved to Mayo Regional Hospital and worked through the merger with Northern Light Health. Now I am a senior vice president for Northern Light Health and the president of two critical access hospitals, CA Dean Hospital in Greenville and Mayo Regional, Mayo, Northern Light Mayo Hospital in Dover Foxcroft. Caring for rural areas always has its challenges, but it's also got very distinct rewards. You often see the changes that you make in people's lives firsthand and on a daily basis, something that you don't always see when you work in a larger, more urban area your organizations make a difference to people in those areas. Now I'm excited to be leading the team that is building a new hospital in Greenville to replace the one that was more than 100 years old and to care for the, the Moosehead Lake region for years to come. So what's my point? The, my point in sharing my career path is not to say that yours should be just like mine or that it should be. Um, it's not to be to brag it's to point out that opportunities are out there if you keep your eyes open to the possibilities. Believe me, I had no idea or vision when I first got my first RN diploma that I would be in my 20th year as a hospital CEO this year. There are several things you can do to prepare yourself for leadership opportunities. 
The first is to just say yes. There are, there are opportunities often come up at work that are not part of your job and they're not on your to-do list. But projects need to be done and stepping up to help show leadership, you are motivated to help the organization. Strive to be a high performer. Don't just work hard, be the best that you can be at the role that you have and you may find yourself moving up or on to the next role sooner than you know. Be a lifelong learner. I know you are thinking, what is she crazy? I'm just getting out of school. I don't want to go back. But there are, regardless of your career choice, going, it doesn't have to be going back to college. There are certifications, there are courses, there's ongoing education that you can take to improve your knowledge and add to your resume. So, and take care of yourselves. Work-life balance is essential. You are entering the workforce during one of the most stressful times in the history of our state, our nation, and the world. It is important to allow yourself time to rest, decompress, and be your best self for your family and your employer. In closing, again, I say congratulations to you all. Look around Maine for your work opportunities. They are all around you, and Maine needs you all. Thank you. Marie, in appreciation for joining us for our commencement exercises, we give you this gift. It's not the bottle of water. <laughs> what, is, what it is is a, an example of a fine woodworking done by our, our cabinet making and woodworking program and department. And this is for you. And thanking you for your wonderful address today. Thank you so much. Thank you very it's much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Donna, would you please join us? Would you come up? Donna McLaughlin served as the full-time clinical coordinator for the medical radiography program between 1991 and 2020 and continues to serve the college as an adjunct clinical instructor. Donna takes pride in her affiliation with Eastern Maine Community College as she is not only a 30-year employee but also a proud graduate of the class of 1976. During her tenure, during her tenure as a full-time instructor, Donna continuously sought ways to give back to her alma mater through her committee work and participation in Faculty Senate. Though her primary office was located at Eastern Maine Medical Center, she was a constant presence on campus. She volunteered at every tech day, leading her students in campus cleanup and other volunteer events that were held on campus and in the surrounding community. Donna was the consummate teammate in a department that takes pride in being one of the best medical radiography programs in the state and beyond. She worked tirelessly to ensure that her students were well prepared to take their national boards, and during her tenure, the program experienced a passage rate average of well over 90%. As a student-centered instructor, she instilled the values that aspire, aspiring radiographers need to be successful in their chosen profession. Dependability, professionalism, problem solving, honesty, and adaptability. Donna is one of our own, and we are very proud to honor her with emeritus status.
Although he retired in 2011, Charlie Wharton continues to serve the college and its students as an adjunct faculty member for the diesel truck and heavy equipment program. He is a strong supporter of the mission of the college as witnessed by his support for both technical and general education as vital components in the success of students. Charlie is an innovator and one of the first at EMCC to embrace computers and their use in technology. Charlie guided the program through the transition from the traditional machining to computer numerical controlled machining, computer-aided drafting and design, and computer-aided manufacturing required by today's employers. He was instrumental in procuring needed equipment and resources to implement the changes. As program department chair, Charlie guided the expansion of his program from 20 to 40 students to include two different programs, precision metal manufacturing and applied metal manufacturing, thus meeting business needs for workers of varied proficiencies. Charlie also taught countless short-term business and industry machining courses to prospective employees for businesses such as General Electric and Brewer Automotive Components and nurtured strong industry ties and support. Charlie was a 1980 graduate of Eastern Maine Vocational Technical Institute and was hired at the college in 1983 as a faculty member in machine tool department. He taught precision and applied machining during his 28 years as a full-time instructor, and it is my pleasure to honor him with emeritus status. On behalf of Eastern Maine Community College, in the Maine Community College system, it is my honor to award both Donna McLaughlin and Charlie Wharton with faculty emeritus status. Give them a round of applause. Could I have the students from United Technologies Center please come on down? Oh, whoa, is that all of you? Wow. Are you all from UTC? Wow. I don't have the name. It has been an honor of Eastern Maine Community College to provide education up educational opportunities to high school students attending United Technologies Center. Through this program, high school students receive credits at EMCC toward the certification in small business management. Tonight, we are joined by several high school students that will be graduating college before they graduate from high school. However, at this moment, we would like to honor these students because they have a prom to go to immediately after they receive their diploma. So a certificate in small business development, Anthony Michael Boyce, high honors. Trey Christopher Brown, honors. <laughs> Alea, Alea Sese Kamari, close enough, she said, <laughs> honors. <laughs> Sh 
Charlotte Jane Karen, High Honors. Charlotte is also earning an Associate in uh, Associate Applied Arts in Liberal Studies. <laughs> Keely Shea Clark. <laughs> Leah Nicole Crosby. Leah is also earning her degree in liberal studies. Parker Robert Foley, high honors. Corbin A. E. Philip Ham, also earning a degree in liberal studies, high honors. Araya Ray Jelks, honors. Araya is also earning an associate degree in liberal studies. <laughs> Tiffany Brienne Levesque, honors. <laughs> Xander A. Moore, honors. Erica L. Simons, honors. <laughs> Megan Lynn Tracy, she's also receiving an associate degree in liberal studies with honors. <laughs> Connor Patrick. Yakolovich, high honors. <laughs> Can you imagine? They, several of them earned degrees while they were still in high school. What a feat. Graduation from a program means that a student is prepared to enter his or her field and succeed. So faculty take pride in all of their graduates. Students who distinguish themselves within their discipline are recognized through our Excellence in Technology Award. Faculty in the technical departments choose the Excellence in Technology Award recipients on the basis of technical skills, leadership, and work ethic. In making their decision, faculty look at how students have interacted with their peers, instructors, and the rest of the college. They also consider grade point average, and most importantly, they consider the student's mastery of the discipline. The students who receive this award exemplify the best accomplishments of every of each technical program. As I call your name, will the students receiving the Excellence in Technology Award please rise and remain standing. I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all the names are announced. Automotive Technology, Shawnee Elizabeth Worcester. Building Construction Technology, Tyson Todd Gray. Business Management, Kimber Parker. Computer Technology, Abby Grindle. Criminal Justice, Rebecca Peters. Culinary Arts, Cameron Coyle. Diesel Truck and Heavy Equipment, Caleb Young. Digital Graphic Design, Abigail Johnston. Early Childhood Education, Jordan Castro Long. Electrical and Automation Technology, Nirana Nico Naranja. 
Electrician's Technology, Shana Lissette. Emergency Medical Services, Courtney Munger. Fine Woodworking and Cabinet Making, Hannah Drinkwater. Fire Science Technology, Matt Correa. Human Services, Megan Ireland. Liberal Studies, Joy Shero. Medical Assistant Technology, Dominic Sanchez. Medical Office Technology, Joy Shero. Medical Radiography, Darian Jellison. <laughs> Nursing, Grace Jordan. <laughs> Plumbing Technology, Nathan Clifford. Refrigeration, Air Conditioning and Heating, Nick Cox. <laughs> restaurant, air I mean, restaurant and Food Service Management, May Lee Perkins. And welding technology, Dalton Rosignol. <laughs> With the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees of the Maine Community College System and the State of Maine, I am honored to present the 2022 graduating class to the President of Eastern Maine Community College, Dr. Wayne Burton, who will confirm the academic awards which include degrees, certificates, and advanced certificates. Candidates, please remain seated until the usher instructs you to come to the stage. President Burton, as Vice President of Academic Affairs, it is my privilege to present the Eastern Maine Community College graduating class of 2022. Uh, President Russell and our UTC graduates, you set the bar high for reading the names. So graduates, are you ready? All right, let's do this. So we're, we're ready for you to come on up. Let's get this started. So these are graduates in the Automotive Technology Associate in Applied Science degree, Jeremy James Doyer, Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Brittany Ann Pike. <laughs> Shawnee Worster. Graduates in the Building Construction Technology, Associate in Applied Science degree, Eli Blodgett, high honors. <laughs> Jet Matthew John Boyer. <laughs> Clarence A. Burnham. Dallas J. Culver Croning. Aaron Lavut Emery, high honors. Daniel Ray Farrell. Tyson Todd Gray, high honors. Samuel Koch, high honors. Itsuki Langley, honors. Keith Edward P. 
Pomeray. Matthew St. Germain. Graduates with an associate in applied science degree, business management, career option. Amy Michaela Bauman, high honors. <laughs> Jennifer May Chadwick. Audra Faye Espling. Elora Faith Hink, honors. Cassidy Lynn Jackson, honors. Avery J. Jester, high honors. Alexis Janice Johnson. Jill A. Sanborn, high honors. <laughs> Graduates with an associate in applied science degree, business management transfer option. Amanda A. Austin, high honors in Phi Theta Kappa. Cassandra K. Billings, honors, Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Dylan Hunter Getchell, honors. <laughs> Mark Kasperzak, honors. Emma Jacqueline Norton, honors. Michael David Worcester. Thank you for your service. Associate in Applied Science Degree Career Studies, Ryan K. G. Pelkey, sorry, honors. Phi Theta Kappa, with a certificate in computer repair technology and computer, computer technology coding. Congratulations. Charlene Marie Buskirk. Callista Joy Forsyth, honors, and Phi Theta Kappa. Abby Gail Grindle, honors. Graduates and Associate in Applied Science Criminal Justice, Casey Boulay, honors. Justin Michael Garcelone, honors. Lucas Holyoke Layton, honors. <laughs> Rebecca Lane Peters, high honors in Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Samantha Nicole Lee Simmons. Lauren Swim. <laughs> Graduates in the Associate in Applied Science degree, Culinary Arts. Jennifer Allen, honors.
Brenda J. Bernier. Cameron Coyle, High Honors, Phi Theta Kappa. Hannah Day, Honors. Nico Mills, Honors. Graduates in the Associate in Applied Science degree, Diesel Truck and Heavy Equipment Technology. Jake Patrick Domigan, Honors. Congratulations. Cody P. McDonald, Honors. Ryan John Mullen, Honors. Caleb Ouellette. Caleb Welsh. Caleb Young, Honors. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree, Digital Graphic Design. Natasha Brenda Clement, High Honors and Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Destiny Dupre, Honors. <laughs> Amy Lynn Georgia, Honors and Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Alicia Hall. <laughs> Tran Nat Trung Ho, High Honors and Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Abigail Marie Johnston, high honors. Jenny Lynn Jordan, honors. Connor John McDevitt, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Angela Marie Patterson. Carly Rose Pettengill, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Andrew Davis Sykes. Joshua Allen Smith, honors. Cassandra Thompson. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree, Early Childhood Education. Hannah Lynn Harriet Beam. Jordan Castro Long, high honors. Abigail Lisa Hallett. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree, Secondary Education. Jenna Suzanne McGrath. Tyler O. Mock, Honors Phi Theta Kappa. Gabriel Nason. Hi. 
graduates with an associate in applied science degree, electrical and automation technology, Joshua Lee Bragg. Samuel Prescott Donaldson. Isaiah Michael Malay Honors. Nico Nirana, High Honors. How are you? Logan Trombley. Graduate with a certificate in electrician's technology, Devin Matthew Philbrick. <laughs> Ryan John Stewart Tribeau. <laughs> Graduates with an associate in applied science, EMS, emergency medical services. Courtney J. Munger, high honors. Graduates with an associate in applied science, fire science, Matthew Anthony Correa. Graduates with an associate in applied science, fine woodworking, Hannah Roby Luis Drinkwater. High honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Aiden William Goller. Hunter Roy. Graduates with an associate in applied science degree, human services. Victoria Elizabeth Glynn, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Claire Rose Ouellette, honors. Mariah Taylor Nutter. High honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Cassidy Lee Robinson. Megan Jo Beth Ireland, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science Liberal Studies, Amanda Haskell. Austin M. DeShane, Honors. Andrew Douglas Snowman, High Honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Justin Anthony Giardin Bishop, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Kat Warren, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Miles Allen Adams. Michael Baker III. Piper Noel Hardison, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Christopher Pittman Smith, honors. Joshua Matthew Ryan D'Souza. <laughs> Olivia Denea Burns. 
graduation. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science, Medical Assisting, Sarah Linnea Averill. Sarah also has graduating with a Certificate in Medical Assistant. Madison L. Curtis. Brittany Lynn DeWitt, high honors. Janice Pearson. Congratulations. Mai Hen Trong, honors. Congratulations. Aaron Nicole Williams. Anna Jo Conklin. JC Marie Cook. Susan Marie Govin, with a, also with a certificate in medical assisting, and Phi Theta Kappa. These are graduates with a certificate in medical assisting. Sarah Massey Richards. Congratulations. Ashley A. McCourt, honors. Congratulations. Amethyst Marie Marathu, honors. Darlene Norton, honors. Daniel Rutledge. Caitlin J. Saunders. Deanna Smith, honors. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science, Medical Office Technology Coding Option, Sierra Finnamore Bryant, honors. Billy Joe M. Moores. Congratulations. Joy Cheryl, high honors, Phi Theta Kappa, with an Associates in Applied Science degree in Liberal Studies as well. Valerie Ann Taylor, honors. You did it. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science, Medical Office Technology, Healthcare Option, Amy E. Forrest Bernard. High honors and Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science Degree, Medical Radiography. Lily Isabella Berg, honors. Maggie Ann Byers, honors. Congratulations. Courtney Fish. Congratulations. Mackenzie Folsom. Darian W. Jellison, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Alyssa Kelly, honors. Samuel Reed Latin. Latin? Latin, thank you, honors. Benjamin Riley Fair. Yeah. 
Jessica Marie Preble honors. Brogan Prince, high honors. Aaron Lynn Levesque Stevens, high honors. Emily Marie Strout, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Savannah Marie Waite, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Brianne Marie Whitney. Aaliyah Loisan Williams, honors. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree in nursing, Grace Jordan, high honors in Phi Theta Kappa. Amanda Therese Beecroft, high honors in Phi Theta Kappa. Jenna Kate Boucher, honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Ryan Elaine Boucher, honors. Did I get Miranda Lottie Caldwell, high honors. Jennifer A. Carey, honors. Sherry Ann Chandler, honors. Felicia P. Cleaves, honors. Cassandra Dawn Craig, honors. Congratulations. Emily L. Hannington, honors. Jay Harkins, honors. Haley Ann Harrison, honors, and Phi Theta Kappa. Jillian L. Harvey, high honors, and Phi Theta Kappa. Eliza D. Jenkins, honors. Amanda King, Andrew Gall Knight. <laughs> Jesse Kim McIntyre, honors. <laughs> Candy L. Nichols, honors. Teresa Savi Anacha, honors, Phi Theta Kappa. Jessica L. Pelkey, honors. Cassandra Priscilla Richardson, honors, and Phi Theta Kappa. Sandra P. Sykes, honors. Kristen Susie, honors. Honors, thank you. It's handwritten, beautiful. Emily Catherine Stanley, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Thank you. 
Taylor M. Terrio, honors. Jordan White. Graduates with a certificate in plumbing, Riley G. Eastman. Joshua Andrew Fitzpatrick. Isaac Raymond Lane. Brian Emery Rollerson, high honors. Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree, Refrigeration, AC, and Heating Technology, Tyler Beckham. Nicholas Richard Cox, high honors and Phi Theta Kappa. Andrew R. Madri, honors. Corey James Stanhope. Kevin Michael Whittemore, Marine Corps veteran. <laughs> Graduates with an Associate in Applied Science degree, Welding Technology, Sebastian Lee Bouchard. Wade Connery Clifford also has a certificate in welding. Do I have to unroll this one? The suspense. Aiden Collette. Isaac Nash Gonzalez. Sophia Monaghan Hendrick, also with a certificate in welding. Aubrey B. Cronholm. Dominic R. Page, honors. Christopher A. Roberts. Dalton M. Rosignol, high honors. <laughs> Graduates with a certificate in welding technology. John Michael Dion, honors. <laughs> Molly Nagel, honors. Taylor Tetrio. Thomas Colin Watson. Congratulations, graduates. You may now move your tassel from the right-hand side to the left over your head. Ladies and gentlemen, faculty, family, and friends, I present to you the Eastern Maine Community College Class of 22.
And then after what you've been through, you certainly deserve that. This concludes the 55th graduation ceremony at Eastern Maine Community College. Will the audience please remain seated until all of the graduates, faculty, and stage party have left the hall. And please drive safely going home. <laughs>